There's a lot of discussion uh, taking place recently about motive in this debate on absolute value. Uh, if indeed it is a debate, I think it's just two sides presenting sort of evidence for their perspective points of view, or respective points of view, rather. Um, now, rather than just reach for the motive fallacy and say, that's why I'm just going to rule all this stuff out of order, I would sort of apply... I would question motives, um, or question the questioning of motives to determine whether or not um, something can be learned by the fact that motive itself is being uh, used as a case against what the other person is arguing. Um, the motive fallacy is sort of... Um, I can say that it can be used offensively. In other words, if somebody... If I'm going to pull motive fallacy on somebody, if I'm going to write off what they're saying by um, saying that what you're doing is engaging in an ad hom or a motive fallacy or whatever, um, then what you're doing is essentially cheating. You see, like when I say you're doing the motive fallacy, I'm essentially accusing you of the motive fallacy. I recently had a long discussion with, with somebody, um, uh, what I would call, I guess, a hostile opponent on the subject of guilt. It, was, it didn't take place here on YouTube, where I kept pointing out how this person's persistent um, attacks on my character were the use of guilt. But this individual quite correctly pointed out that, in a sense, me accusing the person of trying to guilt me is me guilting them. So this is where guilt and motive and perspective get sort of muddled up, and this is actually where it gets interesting, in my opinion. Um, because if I'm sort of saying, all you're doing is guilting me, that that's all your, your argument is, even if there's plenty of evidence, if this person is like calling me, not, not necessarily calling me names, but sort of impugning my character, saying you're making that argument for nefarious reasons, or you're, you're doing things for, um, for um, you know, uh, you're just being clever or whatever, you're just being selfish or whatever, they may sincerely believe that. They may not believe what you're saying. They may not be convinced that your motives are impeccable or even um, viable. It's not just that they're deliberately trying to trip me up, and this became apparent when I saw this person consistently um, bringing my character into it and or was trying to say this is you know people who make arguments like this are inevitably this kind of a person or whatever now when I consistently said all you're doing is employing guilt here what was I doing I was I was sort of saying your use of guilt I was using that as a tripwire in the same way as they were trying to trip me up by applying guilt to me you see it's a labyrinth that's very difficult to get out of um, it's it's not as cut and dried as one might think it is. Me just accusing somebody of using the motive fallacy is, in a sense, me using the motive fallacy, right? It's just saying that, well, you're you're attacking my motives. You don't want to deal with the arguments. Um, <clears throat> you know, I just I'm in the midst of a comment exchange with Tourette's Aspie aphorisms, and that's what I'm saying. I said, look, all you're doing is you're you're attacking me personally. And he does seem, or she, I'm not sure, does seem to be saying that, um, actually, yeah, he's got the this, the, um, the Pythian oracle on his, uh, or she's got the Pythian oracle on her, uh, on her um, avatar, so I presume, I'm actually, I'm speaking to a woman, but I don't know, don't care, really. Um, she's saying, um, she's implying that the motives count, and I'm saying, you realize that's just the motive fallacy. So who is accusing whom here? It's not it's not clear, right? When you're dealing with um, motive fallacies, guilt, ad homs, um, even perspectivism, a lot of people get frustrated when they're talking about me because I might switch my perspective right in the middle of a discussion. So they've they've sort of lost control of you know the situation, or they're uh, not in terms of an actual control, but I'm saying they've lost control of their they've lost grasp of the situation. 
they've lost they're trying to find out where I am because when I'm talking my perspective may shift on the you know on a dime type thing um, what do you do in a, in a case like that and how do you determine whether or not somebody is questioning somebody else's motives like somebody who's saying that only a real jerk would think how I feel and I'm not saying anyone is saying this but let's just for the sake of argument saying only a real jerk would believe what you believe or say what you would say or you know this tells me something about your character if you say this that or the other or whatever okay that and I, let's say someone says this to me and I reply to them well all you're doing is you're questioning my motives which is a logical fallacy therefore I can just disregard all that because I'm dealing with somebody who's fundamentally dishonest getting out of that loop is not an easy thing to do um, the only thing I think and, and this is my remedy for it is and I just have the personality for it is maddening persistence I can just keep slugging more or less continuously because these sorts of things these ideas actually have meaning for me they're important to me so the fact that somebody is questioning my motives all that that really does is I just sort of say okay then can we really have a discussion here now that's what I like to think that I'm doing but at the end of the day am I communicating that effectively to the other person and in the midst of the discussion there's an enormous temptation if somebody is you believe is as it were screwing with you to screw with them in return to sort of say well I know you are but what am I that kind of thing um, I'm a human being I'm as likely to do that as anybody else is um, so I think that something fundamental has to take place here. You have to sort of either say this person is sincere or they aren't, um, in a fundamental sense. We can all lose our way and get sidetracked in discussions when you know things get heated or whatever, or when somebody says something that particularly grinds your gears, even if they don't mean it to. You know, this little click takes place and you say, what's that son of a bitch really trying to say about me or what are they trying to do or what kind of nefarious word of the day tactics are they using? Uh, as I say, I think it's human to do this. Um, but I, I would say that it, it derails the discussion. And again, it's hard to... It, it's a kind of derailment that is particularly gnarly, I guess you'd call it. It's particularly Gordian knot-like, in that you're never quite sure like, what the situation is. Uh, especially if these are, I won't say convictions, but especially if the what is being discussed is of, I don't know, I guess fundamental importance. We're back to the original uh, question. How do you deal with somebody who is questioning axioms that you find so fundamental? It just seems crazy that, that, that anyone should do this. You have to be, you know, you have to be making something up. Um, it reminds me of the old days under communism in the Soviet Union. I don't know if the satellite states did this, but. Um, if you were a dissident, they would often lock you in a mental hospital. Now that was one of the things that was used as evidence um, of the fundamental cruelty and arbitrary brutality of the communist regime. Um, it was essentially saying reality is what the regime says it is, and if anyone disagrees they are obviously insane. Now, we all know what we actually think of that kind of thing. We sort of think, okay, they're, they knew that this person was just telling the truth and they locked them up because they were afraid of the truth. Is it possible that, you know, there's, um, is it possible that someone could actually say this, though, and actually believe it? Um, there's a fellow a Russian politician today, an ultranationalist called Dugin. He's a Eurasianist. He believes in... Um, this vast empire in, in, uh, encompassing all of uh, Europe and Russia. He thinks that that's the ultimate aim of Western civilization is to have this uh, one entity from Vladivostok to uh, Lisbon. 
Um, and he sort of says, anyone who thinks that this is a bad idea, and he, he writes this in, in one of his polemics, anyone who thinks otherwise is mentally ill and needs to see a doctor. And he seems to mean it. Um, what do you do with that? You know, what do you do with with that kind of fundamental disagreement? If you disagree with this guy's point of view, he sincerely believes that you're mentally ill. Um, he sincerely believes that you're messing around. Um, a lot of objectivists actually treat you the same way. If you if you've ever discussed objectivism with someone who's into Ayn Rand or whatever, they will say that you're obviously making such a fundamental error that there's something wrong with you. Um, there's something defective. Anyone who disagrees with the fundamental premises is obviously um, got a few loose screws up there. This is, I think, far more widespread than we realize. Um, I think it's the reason why we have armies and police forces. Uh, we, but we believe that there are people who are fundamentally flawed, right? Uh, who are fundamentally flawed in the way that they see reality. Um, and we need to correct them, even if it means using force, even if it means trying to rebuild their own minds, or rebuild their minds. Um, what do you do with that? Um, it it, it kind of goes back to you know one of my favorite examples, the Spanish Inquisition. I'm refusing to give in to what the Grand Inquisitor is telling me is unarguable truth. And you know they would have this ceremony where the the Inquisition would hand you over to the civil authorities, and they would say that of this ceremony where the church authorities would say to the civil authorities, like a priest might meet a, a commander of the local garrison and say, we can't deal with this guy anymore, so we're handing him over to you, the civil authorities, with the admonition that you are not to harm him in any way at all. But they knew what the civil authorities were going to do, right? They were going to burn the guy at the stake or humiliate him or whatever. Um, and it may have been sincere. And by the same token, the person who is actually being accused by the Grand Inquisitor, um, he may actually be nothing more than a troublemaker. We don't know what that guy's motive motives were for whatever he was accused of, if he even did it. He may have sincerely wanted to screw up the um, the, the social order, or, the, or he wanted to screw up people's peace of mind, or wanted to endanger their immortal souls. Sorry, there goes my son again, screaming La Bamba. Um, we don't know the motives of the person who is actually in the dock defending himself against the Grand Inquisitor. We're inclined to believe that his motives were probably pure, but again, that's just because we have the cult of the victim in our society. Anyone who's being coerced by a bigger and more powerful authority is almost certainly in the right. Um, I'm not really sure that motive really has any place in this discussion. Um, but, as I say, it's labyrinthine in your attempts to get motive out, especially when you believe that enormous things are at stake. This is fundamental here, isn't it? Um, this is fundamental, and a lot of people build their view of reality around these arguments, these points that are being made, and they're going to resist. And some of the arguments, some of the points of view being made at this kind of level of discussion are disturbing to some people, are disturbing to a lot of people. Um, I often talk about existential panic and existential horror and existential crisis. If anyone's ever been through one of these, you know that ideas can cause this. Ideas can cause uh, severe, severely negative reactions, I suppose. They can throw you into a complete state of existential angst, panic even. So people will question the motives of somebody. They will see you as an out-and-out -out threat. Um, you're not just discussing something. You're not really talking about your own first-person perspective. Or when you do say that you are, they simply don't believe you. Okay. 
what's the point of discussing anything anymore at that point? Um, I would say that there really isn't any point in discussing anything anymore, and the best way to carry on those sorts of discussions is in the political arena. Um, because you can't... If you can't agree on the fundamentals, then it now becomes a question of who's going to have their point of view prevail. And how do we decide on that? Well, you reach for your guns, right? Or you at least reach for the numbers, or you have an election, or something like this. You know, it, it now becomes, as the, in the case of the Spanish Inquisition, no longer a philosophical issue, it's now a civil issue. Because the heretic, or the inmate of the Gulag Mental Hospital, is no longer actually just somebody who's committed some crime or whatever. His ideas are eroding the bedrock of everything that our civilization or everything our our ethics are built upon. Um, it's kind of a weird sense you're giving the the Grand Inquisitor the benefit of the doubt here, or at least sort of some sort of equivalency with the person that he's accusing. Um, again, how do we know? How do we know that de Torquemada wasn't 100% sincere and he believed that he was he, he was willing to do all what he saw as horrible things for the greater good? Uh, no pain, no gain. We don't know. We don't know what he thought of in his first-person thoughts, in his first-person view of everything that he was doing. Uh, but but the, the assumption that we can know these things is so deeply ingrained in our thinking that even people like me, who are trying to argue against our ability to do this, I'm just as guilty of doing it as anyone else is. We're humans, I guess. Humans do this. Humans are inconsistent and contradictory. 